Exciting news from CES just moments ago, uh, probably for you last night by the time I actually get around to uploading this video, but PlayStation VR 2 took front and center stage. Here's a brief snippet of some of that presentation. Uh, Jim Ryan got on stage and talked all about PlayStation VR 2, um, talking about the tenets of what make virtual reality so wonderful and some of the ideas that they had when developing things. The big three takeaways to take from this was that they're gonna add new sensory features. It's gonna have enhanced tracking controls and as a subset of that, a new controller. And it's gonna have upgraded visual fidelity. Now there's a blog that accompanies this, um, but I think a pictures or at least a YouTube video are probably worth a thousand words. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new features that are coming out. One of the big ones that they mentioned was eye tracking and different types of responsive feedback based on eye tracking. Now, as somebody who wears glasses, I can tell you guys in the virtual reality space, um, this is a challenge. <laughs> I usually keep my glasses on. That's one of the things I actually prefer about PlayStation VR over some of the other competitors is that you can kind of pull the headset farther away and you're still able to see with glasses. I am very, very, very nearsighted. I'm so nearsighted, in fact, if I took my glasses off and I put the VR headset on, everything would be blurry to me. So I absolutely need my glasses 100% to experience virtual reality. And that's what I've always been uh, so positive about PlayStation. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll post a link to the description below. I talk a lot about this in a separate video about people with glasses and how I wear my headset. If you find that interesting, check it out below in the description box. But uh, if not, just suffice to say that um, for me, I need to look out the center of my lenses at the screen. And that's what was the other nice thing about virtual reality was that um, I'm just kind of programmed to turn my head to look at something. I have to look at things almost squarely when I look. I have a hard time looking out of the perimeter of my glasses uh, because my prescription does change so radically that when I look out in the corners, it's not so great. So for me personally, I don't really know if eye tracking is going to be something that means a lot to me. Um, and the reality is since I'm turning my head all the time anyway, virtual reality just works for me under that guise. Um, but that said, uh, it's interesting that they have tried to incorporate even more computing power into the VR headset itself. Keep in mind right now on PSVR 1, it is accompanied by what I lovingly call the brain box. That's where all the processing takes place. Your headset plugs into that box, then that box plugs into the back of your console. Um, and it works, all the processing there. It sounds like they want to bring some of that. I don't know the ultimate, we haven't seen the final design of this thing yet. I don't know if that the ultimate idea is to bring everything to the headset or at least more, but it looks like they're going in that direction, which I find interesting. I'll be curious to see if that means it could be less wires connected to your console potentially. Um, and I don't really know where the application would come into play. Um, you know, virtual reality has a very, very large field of view. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Uh, they've increased the field of the view on the PSVR 2. Um, however, um, I don't know how often people are rolling their eyes when they're looking through a headset. It seems like typically people are in awe and they're looking. They're usually their hands are open, their palms are up towards the air and they're looking around, rolling their eyes, you know, rolling your eyes, that sort of thing. Does it really seem like it's a major, uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. I'm going to pause this video here. We'll get back to that in a moment. I'm jumping over to the PlayStation blog. Um, this is an article that just went live moments ago, um, kind of in tandem with this CES presentation. And it goes on to say that PSVR 2 is going to take gaming to a whole new level with the headset on and the new controllers, which I briefly, I didn't really talk about them, but you saw them in that previous video with Jim Ryan. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's going to add some next gen high fidelity visuals. So let's look at some of the bullet points of things that they're actually promoting here. Uh, visual fidelity is gonna increase to uh, 4K HDR, 110 field of uh, degree view. And, and like I said, you know, when you think about how much you see in virtual reality and one of the struggles as somebody who wants to record and show gameplay to you guys, it's very difficult to capture virtual reality. It does not look remotely close as it does on the screen, the fish, the fish lens, the fisheye lens kind of experience you get on a flat panel display does not replicate the peripheral vision and the sense of total immersion that you get in virtual reality. 
I thought the field of view was good already. The fact that they're going to make it even better is interesting. I don't know what they're ultimately going to do with that yet, but it's something that it's exciting to me that obviously the technology is advancing and moving forth. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, players can expect it with this new OLED display. P players can expect a display resolution of uh, 2000 by 2040 and frame rates of 90 hertz and 120 hertz, which I feel like may be a step down from what the original VR spec was. I, I could have sworn it was 120 previously. See, it says 90, 120. I'm not really sure what that 90 is about. Um, uh, maybe someone in the comments can provide a little more clarity on that. Um, you're gonna have a headset-based controller tracking, as we talked a little bit about a moment ago with some of the new eye tracking. Your movements and the direction you look at will be reflected in-game without the need for an external camera. That'll be interesting to see how much um, that actually comes into fruition right now. What you have is an external camera that records your movement. The headset has these blue LED lights that are constantly broadcasting your physical space in the virtual reality world as you move forward, up, down, left, and right. It's what guides what your basically North Star is. If you're looking directly at the camera, then in the game, that's directly forward. Uh, if you're above the camera and in an altitude, you're uh, like climbing a ladder or something, you're above that. If you crouch down on the ground and your head is below the camera, you're below the ground. Doesn't really come into play too much. Uh, this is a few strategic first person shooter games where that matters, but for the most part, height isn't really a big deal in virtual reality. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense anyway because it's hard to climb a virtual ladder if you don't have one in your own home, right? Um, but maybe the idea of an external camera is good. I worry about the tracking here, and that's why I say that I feel like there may still want to be a camera here. VR is still somewhat finicky, and we have seen, even with the Wii sensor, which did have, I mean, this was Gen 1 tech, but think back to how much your Wiimote would constantly lose its pairing and it would get confused. Think of even on your cell phone sometimes when you're sitting at a red light and you're trying to navigate somewhere on your maps and you have to kind of swivel your, your phone around with your wrist and figure eights to kind of reset the experience. You obviously wouldn't do that with a headset on, would you? Um, so we'll, I'll be curious to see with that eye base tracking and some of that other stuff. Not really sure if the tech's quite there yet. Um, they are the one thing that did interesting me was the new sensory features. Um, we already talked a little bit about eye tracking, but they're going to include headset feedback via haptics with 3D audio. And this is all meant to create uh, an incredibly deep feeling of immersion. Uh, headset feedback is a new sensory feature that amplifies the sensations of in game actions by the player. Um, for example, gamers can feel the character's elevated pulse during tense moments the rush of objects passing close overhead, or the thrust of a vehicle. So some light vibration on your head. Uh, most people wear virtual reality, at least the way that it's currently set up now, it's via a headband. You're gonna wear it on your forehead that loops around over the top of your ears, and your ears are exposed, obviously, because you need to put in and out um, earbuds um, to you know hear, and your mouth is usually slightly covered at the nose, your mouth is usually exposed. Um, I say that because think of just your forehead above your eyebrows, uh, above where your glasses would sit, above your ears. That's the real estate they have to work with in order to provide haptic feedback. Now, obviously haptic feedback works because you're holding a controller and you vibrate it and it feels, you feel it in your hands. But when you're wearing a headset and there's just a little bit of vibration, it's not a lot of real estate to work with. And I'm curious to see as what will happen with how they implement that. I can't imagine you'd be playing a racing game and your head would just be constantly vibrating. That just doesn't seem realistic. And the reality is when you're in those situations, you're not gonna be exposed just to vibration in one spot. Now, I'm a huge fan of haptic feedback. I've talked so much about how the dual sense control really changes gameplay, particularly with games like Returnal, where I swear you can feel each little drop of rain in your hands. Um, just as an example, right? It's and even Astro's Playroom, you know, obviously the big tech demo that kind of shows off all the wonderful things that the controller can do. Curious to see how they implement that experience in a headset. Um, but I'm glad they're doing it. Obviously, glad they're including that 3D audio, which obviously is a no-brainer. It's already included anyway because most likely your your PlayStation now. Well, actually, not even most likely. I was going to say that your PlayStation. 
uh, only worked 3D audio with headsets, but obviously after the last big patch, anything through HDMI supports 3D audio. So that's not a problem. It, it makes perfectly logical sense that uh, Tempest 3D audio would make its way to the headset. So that's good. Uh, and then lastly, they talk about eye tracking again, because you know they didn't feel like they mentioned it enough. They want to throw it in here one more time. Um, as far as the controller goes, the controllers will have haptic feedback with adaptive triggers, just like the PlayStation DualSense controller does now. That sounds intriguing. I love the haptic system that currently exists. I love the adaptive triggers that currently exist. It'll be interesting to see them translate that DualSense experience onto the new controllers. And um, we'll skip this for a brief moment because I got a video about that. And we'll jump down to some of the specifications. I'm not gonna bore you with all of this. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here that probably people don't, I don't wanna say you don't care, but you just want it to work, right? That was one of the big things about PlayStation's virtual reality. You didn't have to worry about specifications. You didn't have to worry about um, a lot of stuff. It just plugged in and it worked. The games were tailored right for the experience. You don't have to worry about settings computing processing power, any of that, it just worked. And I have absolute faith that Sony can deliver on that again because I had a wonderful experience with the OG PS VR. Um, interestingly enough, they are including a rechargeable battery, which is interesting. Um, makes me wonder again, uh, partially how much that brain box will be required. What is the life of the rechargeable battery? Um, I assume it's not gonna be completely wireless. I don't think they've said that specifically in here yet about wireless or not wireless. I, I can't imagine it would be. But uh, it's curious, it, it's interesting to see as a lot of this is slowly pulled away from that brain box onto the headset. I think it will reduce the footprint, which is a good thing. Lastly, and we'll uh, jump back to here and I'll close out the video for the day, is um, they are touting the Horizon virtual reality experience. Um, this is obviously one of their tentpole franchises, Horizon Zero Dawn, did phenomenally well for them. Uh, wonderful development story in collaboration with Kojima and using you know, his engine for how that all worked out was a very fascinating story for Death Stranding. Their, uh, Kojima's engineers came over and provided a lot of insight. This game has been just very, very highly critically regarded. And the sequel coming out uh, next month, uh, I will have an unboxing video on that. I'm very excited to get the collector edition uh, and check that out. Um, we will continue the adventure, but let's just fast forward a smidge here. What would be the best thing to, how are you gonna sell virtual reality? As I said, it doesn't photograph well, so keep that in mind. This is gonna just look like a flat movie, but the best way to sell it is to obviously show it off. So uh, looks like we're gonna get some sort of on rails experience in which you're playing as Aloy going through the universe. Um, you can see you're on a rowboat there. It's a very limited movement. I'm not sure how much of a technical demo this is going to be versus how much of a groundbreaking gameplay experience this is gonna be. But it's nice to see that Sony is willing to dip into the virtual reality space in conjunction with their existing tentpole franchises in order to make some really cool ideas and games right away. Obviously things come to mind like something with Gran Turismo, something with God of War. It would be awesome to do some sort of motorcycle riding experience from days gone. They have a lot of studios and existing IP to pull from. I have no doubt in my mind that they'll be able to put something cool together. It's just a question of what and when. So very interesting announcement from CES. Uh, PlayStation VR 2 seems to be something that they've definitely put a lot of time and effort and money into. I don't think VR 1 was the wild critical success they wanted it to be. But at the same time, I think it got enough foothold and enough traction that an event like CES is probably the best place to debut this kind of technology. Because CES typically tends to be these larger, grandiose, what if future ideas. I'm glad to see that at least the console space got a small foothold during Sony's presentation. And I'll be really curious to see as more information and games and pricing and all that wonderful stuff is unveiled. Um, definitely check back here when I get all that done, when I get that information because I'll be doing more videos on that content. So I, as I said before, I will post links to everything you've seen here in the description below, as well as my uh, nearsighted PlayStation VR1 checklists for people who wear glasses. Uh, I think it's worth a, a worth a watch, but that's it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.